recording now. I'm going to go away. Bye. <laughs> Bye. You might want to mute yourself. As, hey. Oh, hey. Wow. Oh, sorry. Is that too much? You went <clears> right throat> into throat> it, Dan. Hey, George. What? I like that you started it. It's good. I start conversations every once in a while. Most Man. of the time, though, they're in my head. So you just don't hear them. <laughs> I... I talk too much. So when anyone else talks, it's like, oh, thank God, I can breathe for just a second. Um, <sighs> and then here I go again. And well, let's get to it. Uh, how are you? you I'm you doing, doing great. Right? Yeah. So uh, as Your we AC? just talked about a little bit, yeah, the AC is working again. So it's good. I, feel pretty I good mean, about. we're in the Midwest. You were, like we were saying, we're just on the edge mm -hmm. of it. You, uh, maybe a couple rough days of humidity and uncomfort, discomfort, yep. uncomfort. Discomfort. discomfort. It's discomfort. an uncomfortable situation at 83% yeah. humidity in your house. <laughs> so on that note, I want to welcome a special guest today. Um, Allison, welcome to option five. It's great to have you here for, yeah. Oh, a little clap in. That's yeah. right. Applause, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She deserves it. Uh, <laughs> Allison was one of our product managers here at Crema. And I always fail with dates or time periods. Allison, you've been with us for three, two. Let you struggle a little bit. Oh, please don't. It's yes, so uncomfortable. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I just want to curl up. June um, 4th will be my two year anniversary. Two. And now that you know this, I expect a celebration. So. Oh, wow. There you go. Well, Make I will note, celebrate because I'm not. You do it. <laughs> Don't need I'll to make celebrate no. when, when Steph reminds me because that's what she's so great at. Um, yeah, so you've been at Crema um, for a while now, and I tell almost everybody this when I talk about Crema. We have incredible people across the organization, um, but what's interesting is that it'd be really easy for us to just be a design studio or just be a dev shop. Um, and people tend to come through one of those doors most of the time. They're either coming in to find us as a design studio or user experience studio or as a development agency. But why they stay with us, in my opinion, is because of our product management. It's because of the way that we take care of our clients. It's because of the confidence that, they, that you guys give our clients. So it's because honest. of people like you, Allison, is what he's trying to say. <laughs> That's very sweet. I, I like to believe that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well do you it, don't, you don't have true. to believe it because it is just true. So it's, right. just, it's just a fact. Um, Allison, tell me a little bit about, I think there's this term called product management. Often people misquote it and call it project management, but what would you, how would you define the role at Crema or maybe in the industry at large of what a product manager is? Let's start there. So I wouldn't necessarily say that there's a wrong name for it. I think okay. that it varies on where you are, the type of company that you work for. Like what we do is called a thousand different things. It's really, it boils down to like specifically how you're implementing your job. Yeah. So I've been called a product owner before. I've been called a project manager, product manager. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but really like the, my main goal on any given day is to make sure that my team has everything that they need. So every day is a little bit different. Uh, some days I'm doing like long-term strategy, trying to figure out what the pipeline of work looks like, what features we're going to develop, um, making sure that we've you know got the designs ready to go, or I'm working with the designer to to really you know detail out um, the designs that we'll inevitably implement with development. Some days I'm working with uh, the stakeholders doing the same thing or doing different things to help unblock the team. Some days I'm like knee deep with the, de the development team trying to unblock them or redefine tasks and make sure that they've got exactly what they need to develop everything that is in front of them. So I'm really an unblocker, planner, organizer. You need it. <laughs> All the things. We'll All it. the things. All the things. <laughs> yeah. tell, me, tell me a little bit about when you start thinking about all because that that is pretty multifaceted right and what you need to be focused on what what do you think are some mindsets or some postures that are important for being a great product manager um in general and maybe even more specifically in the way that we work as an agency at crema um working with clients etc 
Yeah. Uh, I, so a term that I've heard thrown around when it comes to describing PMs at CREMA is that we're generalists, but we're really good at being generalists. Mm. So you can't be um, afraid to learn just enough about literally every subject. You want to learn enough so that you can walk into a room and you have context about what's going on. You don't want to learn too much to where you inject yourselves in areas that you probably shouldn't. So yes. that is applicable to design. That's applicable to development. That's really applicable to every facet that you're going to touch into, except you know the, the product management like methodologies or tactics that you're implementing. You, you shouldn't be a generalist there. Mm. Um, so open to learning is really, mm. really really important. It's an absolute must have. You need to be like excited about learning. That's I think something that's a, a really common theme with all of the PMs at CREMA is that like we love to nerd out and learn about all sorts of different things. And that's usually why we love our job so much is we get to learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. Can I brag on Allison real quick? Do it. Because of so the question was, you know, what allows, you know, when you think of postures or disciplines that allows a product manager to be good at what they do. Um, one thing that Allison does really well, which is super hard, is that she can have unbiased, in my opinion, unbiased empathy when she's working with the, her team. So we work with clients and we work with our own coworkers and all put together as one, one team, so to speak. And there are moments where, you know, you don't want to put one side against the other, but I've seen her in a really tactful and just gracious way be empathetic to the client which is sometimes like we have to tell hard truths to the team but also at the same uh, the very next you know you know 10 minutes worth of conversation can be extremely empathetic with the team and then have to tell a hard truth to the client and that is not easy it's not mm -hmm. easy because i think our bent is to if someone's 100 percent customer service focused it might sacrifice the team more than they should or I've got my, my team's back always and forever. And now you're putting yourself against the customer, which is also not always good. And so really having a balance between uh, having a constant unbiased empathy so that the product can be done well is super hard. And Allison is really good at it. I think that's one of the things that makes her just really flourish in her work. I think our whole product uh, manager team is really good, but Alice, Allison specifically is really good at it. So lean into that a little bit, Allison. <clears throat> what are some some either strategies or tactics or even just what goes through your mind as you're trying to navigate those those situations? Because that is in many ways you're representing different people at different times. How how do you how do you navigate that? Um, well, first off, thank you, Dan. That's so heartwarming. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so EQ, emotional intelligence, like mm -hmm. you have good EQ, it, you know, and that's relative, right? But if, if you have the capability of like focusing in and trying your best to understand where other people are as well as where you are, it, it, it's a, it's a balance, right? So actually one of the best pieces of advice comes from Tuck, my boss, one of the best gifts I've ever been given. Thank you guys for that. <laughs> he gave me this piece of advice that I actually like in those situations, I think about a lot and I tell the team a lot is that you know everybody's emotions are valid you can't invalidate someone else's emotion even if you might not agree with it or you might not understand it you can't invalidate it it's happening it's happening to them and it's very real to them mm -hmm. so you have to like take that to heart no matter the context of the situation and really try to understand that like you know maybe the team is really upset and they don't want to do this but the client is feeling lots of pressure and like all of those feelings are valid and it's really important for us to acknowledge them and try to put ourselves in their shoes and so I try mm. very hard to do that and it's also my responsibility to have the team do the same thing you know mm -hmm. if, if it's just me it's it's I'm gonna be fighting you know at, at every angle just trying to make sure that I can kind of get the team in that mindset as well so I use that mm. tuck quite a lot Love it. it's <laughs> good it's a really good he's a smart guy um, wasn't it, wasn't it Plato that said every, every person's fighting a great battle? Yeah. I think that that goes, you know, I, I saw that one time, um, I didn't 
it, don't attribute it to me. Plato was it, said it, was it. An, um, in, Instagram, um, um, but I but I saw it and I thought that's um, that's one of my favorite quotes is because you just never know what someone's walking into the room with. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's so easy to be like, oh man, I'm having a horrible day, but you know, there's billions of people on this planet, and so everyone is walking in with some level of a great battle. So yeah, very similar to what what you just said. I think it was attributed to Plato, but Ian McLaren, Reverend Doctor John, oh, I don't. Know. Yeah, Wikipedia, man, that'll, that'll take you down a <laughs> rabbit hole. Um, no. Okay. So, so that doesn't come naturally. I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious as well. What are, what are some disciplines? What are some activities that draw those conversations out that give you the space to actually think that way? Um, I know you guys do a lot of things very, both, both very structurally and also just kind of on certain rhythms what are, what are different spaces? What are different um, disciplines that you have that help to, to foster that? Yeah, that's good. Um, so we run um, Agile and Scrum at Crema. So all of your basic, I'm sorry, everybody that hates this word, ceremonies or mm-hmm. yep. meetings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have their place. They do have their place. I, I say both, but with a disclaimer, because, you know, everybody feels strongly one way or another. But we have certain things put into place so that we can have these conversations. So one of which is a retrospective, Mm -hmm. um, my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Agreed. And it's really important that you have like a psychologically safe space during those retrospectives, or you won't get to that, you know, place of being able to empathize with one another. Mm -hmm. Um, another is the PMs at Crema. We have one-on-ones with every single person, um, that we work with. So I have a one-on-one with my, designer. I have a one-on-one with my test engineer, with each of my developers, and that happens on a bi-weekly basis. So like on any given week, I'm in two to four one-on-ones. And at that time, it's like an open, safe space where it's me and that other person. And we talk about situations like that, yeah. where maybe they don't, they don't understand where this is coming from or that is coming from. And it's an opportunity to kind of you know, level set on what's going on and you know, try to advocate one way or another and drill down into those specific situations. Um, So specifically when it comes to like emotional intelligence, empathy, things like that, I think the retrospective is first and foremost, one of the best uses and then the one-on-ones really valuable. What I love about the fact that you guys do those one-on-ones, retrospectives are things that we've been doing for a long time. And we've talked about that on the podcast before. I think something that's interesting is that, that your decision to do those one-on-ones was totally something that you, you as a product management, a product management craft team decided to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was not from leadership. That was not a suggestion. That was not like a micromanaged thing that you, you should do because that's the way the role is carried out. It's like you said, no, there needs to be this safe place to have these safe conversations to press into to hard things or maybe good things. I, you're, you're going to do that. And I, I remember finding out like, way later that you guys had been doing it for a while. And I'm like, that's awesome. I think that's exactly what I told Dan. I was just Mm -hmm. like, that's amazing. Those types of things have happened in our company. We didn't even know about it. It's Mm -hmm. so cool. Um, So I love that. I I love that. Um, What else? What are other, um, you know, I know that there are a lot of ceremonies. I, I will say for me, ceremonies and meetings, it's like, yeah, okay. Ceremonies does make it sound a little bit more like a cult, just as a side note, uh, which yeah, that is what it is. (laughs) Um, <laughs> you guys do wear robes and there is torches burning in the background when you have those ceremonies mm-hmm. and some <clears throat> level of a chant. Right. Um, <laughs> um, what are other, what are other ceremonies? What are other things that you think help the product managers and, and really the cross discipline product team? So I think you representing the team, what are other things that you do on a regular basis to make sure that you can, you can keep your teams aligned and keep things moving forward well? Yeah. So um, backlog refinement or backlog grooming, another cringeworthy word that's been shifted, but stating both for making sure everybody knows what we're talking about. SEO. We'll get some SEO off both of us. Um, So that is a time where it's typically just the product manager and the client walking through the backlog. So that's really my time with the client to figure out and understand where their priorities lie. Their priorities could be coming from a slew of different areas. Like maybe it's um, a user that's a high, high paying user that really wants this feature, or maybe they're going to cut the cord if they don't get it. It's mm-hmm. a high level of pressure that they're getting. 
Maybe it's their boss's boss's boss. Like this sets the context so that I can pass that along to the team. Yeah. So the backlog refinement is where that happens, where we organize the backlog based off of you know business priority and, and need. Let me ask you a quick question on that before you move on to another one. I was in a, in a conference, like a virtual conference recently, and we were talking about backlog grooming or backlog refinement. And somebody, I mentioned the fact that it primarily for us, it's between our, our product managers and the product owner or the, the, the client. Um, someone called me out, and I'm kind of curious your take on this, that we didn't include the entire product team in that backlog grooming meeting. You do bring that up with the team and it gets hashed out with the team. What, what's that transition between the, this kind of private conversation that the two of you have or the, the group has, and then the team that the, great, the greater team has? I'm kind of curious how you handle that. Yeah, that's a great question. I think that there can be an argument made as to why the entire team is in every single meeting. Mm. It boils down to protecting your team's time. I'd love right. to have right. a developer and designer in every single meeting. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be valuing their time and that wouldn't be them championing me as a you know expert in my domain to give them what they need. So yeah. it boils down to trust. Um, and to be honest, like when we have the backlog refinement session with the client, I will pass on everything and anything that needs to be passed on. Maybe mm -hmm. not all of it's relative, maybe, maybe not all of it needs to be, but it truly boils down to trust and trying to figure out where um, their, their time is best suited. Mm -hmm. If someone really wanted to be there, by all means, they're welcome to, but we trust each other <laughs> to have each yeah. other. So, yeah. That's, that's pretty much how I responded in the chat, but I, I, I thought it was interesting because um, they were pretty adamant about saying, no, that's, I thought, man, your team must be in meetings 24 seven. Cause that, that would be really hard to have everybody in that. How do you get anything done? Um, okay. So Alan, go Dan. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's fine. That was fine. Okay. Um, Allison, if we asked you, which I'm going to, so there's no, if what would be on your short list of disciplines that you do or, you know, your attitude or your, your posture that if I didn't have these, I couldn't do my job well. Hmm. Ooh, okay. So when you talk to a product manager, do you think that they talk more about like the tooling and the meetings that they run? Or do you think that they talk about um, how they're working with people, teams, clients more? I want you to answer that for me. Mm. I've heard both many times. Um, like externally? I would yeah. I would say industry-wide, there's more talk about tools. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And I think that what makes a good product manager is leaning back into the, you know, agile manifesto and putting people and processes above tools. And so I would absolutely say that like, if I didn't have the desire to make sure that my team is cared for as like, I see them as an extension of myself, as an extension of like, my family, I know like family, work, work, family, whatever, but that's how I see them. So if, if I didn't have that and I didn't have like the opportunity to like invest in those people, invest in my clients, like I would probably value tools mm -hmm. and tooling and, you know, um, some of the different tactics that you can put into place more than the people, which goes against the philosophy that we kind of lean into when it comes to agile. So mm -hmm. if I didn't have the the different resources and um, practices in place to kind of keep my mind focused on my team above all else, then I would be a, I would not like my job. <laughs> I'll, I'll be very frank. I'm too much <laughs> of a, a people person to, <laughs> not, to, to like that. But yeah. I also think that it would make, it would make me less of a, um, less of a team player and uh, a, a bad product manager mm. it, for myself anyways. Sure. And what's brilliant about the way that she answered your question was that she threw it back to you with a question, which mm -hmm. I think is a great product manager. She, uh, uh, the Socratic method. Yes. Wise, you wise sage, you. I am terrible at that. <laughs> and I always, I always appreciate it and wish I was better at it, but I, I am not Let great Let me at that. answer your question with a question. Yeah. Um, uh, can I also say de playing devil's advocate is <laughs> something that's my favorite. Ah, <laughs> uh, the debate maker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. What are what are some things that you you view as um, 
and maybe this is what you were getting at, Dan, but what are some things that you view as kind of like written in stone that either for the way that Crema works or the way that your product teams work are, um, are things that are really structural to the way that you think um, they shouldn't change very often. This is something we do stand by as being a, a core truth for, for the way we work. So to be totally frank, this is the one that I struggle with the most because most people do. This is hard. There, there are things that we don't even think about because we're just so used to it that are structural and like foundational and shouldn't and won't change. Like, you know, we use Scrum for, um, you know, engagements that use development. Typically we will teeter over to Kanban if it's just a design and prototyping engagement. Like those are foundational. Those are our go-tos. At Crema, we point bugs. That's a hot topic. You guys want to go in the comments on this? Like, that's a hill I will die on. <laughs> do, do you point? Do you point your bugs? For, just to, to give some clarity there, if you're not familiar that's with. That's awesome. Um, with that's the product. best thing I've heard all day, Allison. <laughs> for for those who don't know, though, uh, if you're not familiar with product management processes, um, story pointing is is a is a process of basically giving a level of effort to your tasks, and oftentimes people do or do not point the bugs that are generated by the code that you you have made um the argument might be that you you shouldn't the bugs maybe shouldn't have been there so why put effort to them because that should have been accounted for in the original level of effort but let's be honest um we don't we don't know what's going to happen so i like that, that you guys point bugs that's great that's great so there are things like that right like um things that the whole team has a line on you know as a product management team we have a line on that these are the 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 concrete that we're going to stand on. Yeah. Typically, everything else is really flexible. Um, you know, right now we're learning about uh, modern agile, which is a different way to um, utilize agile. So when you think about Scrum, you know that is a prepackaged set of you know different tools that you can use. Modern agile would be a different way. They've got certain things that they do that I love that I really think that like fit into Crema's values. Will I pick and choose some of their stuff and insert it into our Scrum and Agile like method? Absolutely. Like, right. yes, as long as it's meeting the basic needs of the team and like, you know, outside of our foundational requirements, we have, we're results driven. So what are the results? Are we still functioning as a, as a high functioning team? Are we still meshing and molding well, you know? what are the things that we can toss in and incorporate and try that can help us kind of make sure that we're not only standing firm on our foundation, but also meeting the goals that we've set out to meet. How do you work with the client when a, a new project or a new initiative comes in? One of the things I think about as being structural is like that you're pointed in the right direction, mm -hmm. right? That you're, you're headed towards a common purpose or a vision um, for your project. Um, how do you think that that gets communicated effectively? So I think this is, I, I always found this to be one of the hardest thing when I was kind of in a, a product manager-esque role um, is trying to figure out how to let the client know, I hear where you're going and I'm going to actually position it in a way that I know my team and everyone will understand and agree on it. Um, how do you kind of build up the structure for saying this is our purpose during this project? Um, so that you don't go off in any direction and just start writing whatever code you want? That's a good question. There are a couple different ways to do it and a couple different ways that we're, we do it at Crema. Okay. Um, the strategy and alignment session is really great for engagements that are like just starting up. Um, and it's basically a time to align with the client and talk about, you know, everything that the business is, is looking for and driving for. And it really like sets aside dedicated time to hash those things out in detail. Mm. Uh, typically you walk away with a, wow, I've got all this context around what this client and company is pushing for. And now I've got that in my pocket and we're ready to go. Right. You don't always have time for that. And, um, sometimes you get handed a project or sometimes you get put on a project and that's already happened. Mm -hmm. So we do agile agreements, which mm -hmm. is basically a, a session where we get together and we talk about all the different things that we're doing and driving for. And we agree on the things that we set as a standard as a team. And we agree on the goals that we're trying to meet. And the client of course is involved with that. 
Um, and so that is an, a living document that should update and grow and change as the direction changes. Um, and then lastly, we have like a client measure of success. So what does a client see as successful? Some clients might say, you know, it's um, adoption rate. I want it to be X percentage. Some might yeah. want to lean into velocity. Um, and that, whatever their metric of success, that is their metric of success. And the oh, team will wow. do that. Um, and we measure against that on a biweekly basis with a quick little survey that I'd love to tell you everything about. But it's really important that the team is aligned with what the client is looking for. And we make sure that we reinstate that with every story that we walk through as a team, you know, mm -hmm. is what we're building, reaching that goal. Are we doing scope creep? Does this, you know, I know that this like UI is really beautiful, but like, what does it do to reach that goal? Yeah. It's, it has to hold each other, you know, accountable for that. And they, we all have to be aligned with it because it's everyone's responsibility. Mm -hmm. That working agreement is a really good example of where disciplines, postures, and structures intersect. Mm -hmm. So every side of that team has to come with a mindset of, I, I want to be aligned. I want to communicate well. Mm -hmm. And I want, we just want to work really well together. We want to be a team that's performing really well. So there's this posture, a, a desire. And then the discipline is, is that we're going to come, we're actually going to implement a working agreement and we're going to review it maybe on a regular basis. So there's this discipline, this regularity, consistency of, of, of thought, consistency of practice. And then the structure, it is the, it's the agreement itself. It's that the, we are going to behave by these rules. We yeah, are we're going to write it down. Yeah, we're going to live by this, these principles, so to speak, for as long as this engagement or this whatever time bound relationship looks like. And so that's, that's a really good picture. Um, and just one for myself, but anyone listening, and like use that as like when you think of like how all three of these are interacting, that's a really good example from a team perspective. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Man, so much good information. Okay, what? How do you what, take it all in? I know. There's times when I just have a hard time processing how many incredibly smart people we have at Grima, and trying to keep up with them. Um, it's just not. I'm just not going to be able to do it all the time. Um, what? What's something as you, you think about your role, as you think about product management, as you think about Grima, or maybe the projects you're on, or the ones you're allowed to talk about. Um, what, what's something that gets you excited? Where, where are you excited about where we're going? We've just gone through a really hard season. We all know that it's, it's, I know you have been, um, as with all of us have been stuck at home with this pandemic and, and it's, it's, it's a challenging season for everybody, but looking past that, looking into the future, what's something that you're really excited about? Um, maybe going into the end of 2020 in the next year. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. So, I've been in product management for almost six years now. And so I feel like I've kind of gotten over the hump of, you know, you know, better understanding what I'm supposed to do for a retrospective or, a, you know, how to do what, when. And I feel like our entire PM team is kind of over that as a mm -hmm. whole. Yeah. So we're all really hyper-focused on what can we do? What can we find? How can we pull something else in and change it for the better? So it's not so much focused on, okay, we're going to adopt the safe framework and we're going to really dive in. It's not so much, you know, deep diving into the technicalities or getting like really steadfast against a certain method. It's really about what can we find and how can we implement it to change things up for the better. We see maybe a, a flaw in this area. Um, let's do some research and find different tools out there that we can use. Um, and we've been doing that and every single week we, we meet up and well, bi-weekly we meet up and chat about these things and people were, we're just finding things left and right. So I'm just excited to see this kind of shift. Uh, it's been really like heavy on my mental state of product management. It's a little bit stagnant and mm. you know, dev and design, they have all these different like sweet tools or languages that they get to adopt and learn and like what's next for a product. And this is what's next for product, you know, researching all of these different things that people are doing and implementing and just saying, all right, I see where we can, you know, 
use this and let's see if it'll work. Let's, let's give it the old college try. And if it works, we'll do it across the team, like across the different teams. And if yeah. it doesn't, mm-hmm. we won't. Um, and I love the experimental nature that we have and the buy-in from our different teams to, to do that. Uh, we've been really lucky that the last handful of things that I'm like, guys, we're going to give this a shot. They're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really great. So um, I think that that's a, a good qualifier and a, a good identifier that you should look for if you're looking to hire you know, a product manager for your team or for your company. Like, are they actively trying to improve and find ways that they can make not only themselves, but their product teams better. Mm-hmm. Because if we get to this weird point where we've learned everything that we need to, to run a team adequate, adequate, adequately, like on a baseline, that's cool. But how can you improve your story writing? How can mm-hmm. you improve your retrospectives? How can you make sure that, you know, you're really soaking as much as possible from your developers' minds and your designers' minds? Like, how can you make things better and better? There's literally no end in, um, you know, pressing in and, and making things as as good as they can be. So Hmm. that's what I'm looking forward to. (laughs) So excited right now. Um, So, so just a bunch of things to come out of what you just said there. One is the fact that as we, if we think about, of course, a lot of the vocabulary I'm thinking through right now is definitely based off this kind of quote unquote framework, right? That we're trying to give some language to how, how have we been thinking, not necessarily just what we're doing, but how we've been thinking for the last however many years and you named it, right? It's about, being willing to adapt and to grow and constantly improve and learn. And I think that's what makes an organization like Crema incredible and other teams can work like that as well. Um, Even at the way that you described what you're excited about is really back to kind of our learning loop, which talks about paying attention. So what are other people doing? How are they, how are they doing it? And then collecting those ideas and saying, Hey guys, here's some things I want to try making a decision. So paying attention, collecting, deciding, deciding how you want to move one of those in, maybe just in a small experiment. So that would be the fourth thing to experiment. And then once you figure out the result of that, either a success or sometimes a failure, you start sharing that with the other teams and sharing that maybe outside of Crema, maybe we can make a video about it, I don't, you know, whatever, as a way to say, this is how we're all going to learn together. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, good stuff, Allison. That's, that's, that's very exciting. Um, I, I don't even know. My mind's know tired. Say. She's so smart. She's my mind's tired. Yeah. So Allison, really, I really want to say thank you. You, you and the entire product management team are doing incredible work. And I, I started off the episode t- saying, you know, why do people come to us? They come to us for design or development. They stay with us because of product management. And I think that's true. Mm-hmm. When, when Dan and I in the first season, of the podcast got a chance to talk about the, the kind of story of Crema it was about the fact that early on they were hiring people that happened to have these skills. And then maybe we had this company. So Dan and I could help people do, do things and do it well. And I love the fact that that hasn't changed. They're still hiring incredible people, right? That have this ability to adapt and learn and grow and empathize and be cross-disciplined to achieve incredible outcomes. I've seen the work that our team's doing, the work that your teams are doing. Um, really, really exciting. Um, I'm very, very proud. So thank you for everything you're doing on that. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I guess I get to wrap it up with the normal spiel. Dan, do you want to do it, Dan? You want to? No. You wanna... You're all over it. Yeah, you do it so well. Okay. Well, as usual, thank you, everybody. I do it really well, huh? Yeah, I just can't even speak. Thanks, everybody, <laughs> for listening to another episode at op- Option 5. If you are curious about what the, the title Option 5 means, go back to the early episodes where you can learn about where we say yes and figure things out. It is about experimenting and trying new things. So go back and maybe, maybe look at, listen to the archives. Um, and have yourself a laugh because they're good. It'll be a good time. <laughs> trying to think of that for that first where we were talking about being around like a in a wood lodge drinking whiskey but it was so random i don't remember yeah just random come a long way we've, ma- we've matured a lot ramblings someday. look we're rambling and we're trying to say bye to people can't even do that well <laughs> make sure you subscribe to the podcast uh whatever podcast platform you listen to itunes uh pocket cast uh spotify is buying up everybody right now joe rogan just got his hundred million dollar deal insane um, we're not quite there yet. And nope. if, if you, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, 
if you can, make sure to share this. If, if you know someone who's in product management, someone who's in development, design, test engineering, or in a product team, um, and they're looking to become better at working cross-discipline, to be more empathetic, to, to really figure out how they can adapt and, and, and really maybe do the best work of their lives, that'd be kind of cool. Um, then share this, this podcast with them. And of course, share Crema with them. Uh, I appreciate all of you. I'm glad you're listening. Allison, I'm glad you were here with us today. It was good talking to you, Allison. Oh, it was good talking to you guys and good to see you. I miss your, miss your faces. I know. We'll be together soon. Likewise. I hope. I hope. All right. Thanks, everybody. It will pass. It will pass. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.